gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another, another edition of Intuitive Angling. Much appreciate you guys taking a little time to watch the video. And uh, I'm actually headed back from Stockton Lake right now, had an on the water lesson up there and wanted to do today's video. And uh, as a reminder of that, if you guys are interested in booking any, an on the water lesson with me this fall, uh, just shoot me a private message at my Facebook page, Randy Block and Professional Angler. I'll give you the info on that. And also, I want to remind you guys about our August Solar Bat Sunglass Sale. Um, if you buy a pair of the RB2, my signature series that I'm wearing right here, RB2 sunglasses, um, you get a second pair of glasses from a grab bag free. So all through the month of August, uh, order a pair of my signature series and get a second pair of glasses free. I'll include the link in the description if you guys are interested in that. Much appreciated. Okay guys, today we're going to talk about shade lines and how to fish them and when they're good and when they're not that good. Um, I'm going to go through, I'm sort of going to give you guys a foundational approach here. There's a lot of detail that you can go into that, but for right now, I just wanted to give you sort of a broad foundation. We'll dig into that later on a little bit more, but um, there's a couple considerations for that. The two biggest considerations when you're fishing a shade line, now a shade line is something like you see in the thumbnail. It's like it's a section of bank where there's shade coming off of that bank. And that can be a, a small line or it can be a large line, depending on some factors. But the two main considerations are water temperature and water clarity. That's going to determine how good shade lines are and how to fish them. The first thing is, it's, I want to tell you guys right off the bat, shade lines are not very good in colder water. So if you're dealing with water temperatures, say uh, under 55 degrees, I, I don't recommend fishing shade lines. They're, you, the fish like a little bit brighter areas. so. That's why shade lines are sort of a non-issue in the wintertime. <clears throat> they can actually be more of a negative than a positive. So for the most part, <clears throat> you're going to be focusing on shade lines during the warmer months and specifically in anywhere between late spring to mid fall. Like right now is a real good time to fish them. Now the shade line, as far as how it's laid out, it has a lot to do with the bank angle and any structures that are along the bank, such as trees or buildings or anything like that so the the amount of shade line that you have on the bank is going to have to do with the time of the day and the angle of the bank so one of the things that you can do in your game plan is try to pay attention to when the shade hits certain banks as far as the position of the sun because some banks are going to have a shade line in the morning some banks are going to have a shade line up in the middle of the day some banks are going to have a shade line in the afternoon and uh, the shade line that's created for the most part, what I have found for the most part, guys, is the best shade lines do not extend over about 10 foot away from the bank. If you can get on an area that has a shade line that's anywhere over, say, say five to 10 foot from the bank, that's when those fish will really gravitate to that shade line and use it. If the shade line is greater than you know five or 10 feet from the bank, it disperses the fish more and they don't concentrate. But if you've got a shade line from the bank, say no more out than 10 feet or so, it's gonna put those fish tighter to that bank. And the techniques that you wanna use on it are totally determined by the water clarity. If you, for example, good foundational approach to, uh, to remember with that is the dirtier the water, shallower the fish are gonna be. You know, as the water clears up, they're gonna be deeper and they're also gonna start suspending. So. One of my favorite techniques is I usually go by this type of uh, sort of rule on water clarity. If the water clarity is under a foot and a half, I like to get right on the bank on a shade line bank. And I'll parallel cast like with a crankbait, maybe a spinnerbait, maybe a buzzbait or something, because those fish are not gonna use that shade line out much farther than about two or three feet from the bank. So stay right on the bank. Now, as the water clarity gets clear, so you get into that you know, three to four foot zone, that's when that shade line is critical for that shade line to come out five to 10 feet from the bank because those fish are gonna be down, you know, more into that three to five foot zone in that clarity. And then if you have water visibility of over four or five feet, clear water, that's when those shade lines farther out, like 10 foot or so are gonna be better because those fish, a lot of times they will not only use the bottom, but they're gonna suspend on those shade lines. So like a top water lure would be good. So. Again, my favorite baits are based upon water clarity. Crankbaits, shallow moving baits, if it's dirty, um, if it's in that in-between zone, I like something like a jig, a finesse jig or a shaky head. And if it's real clear, it's hard to beat a small swim bait or a topwater, that type of thing. Um, also with shade, 
um, wind has a little bit of factor with it too. The, the, the one of the things I found about shade is like if you've got days that where you don't have much wind, even if you have shade, that's when I like to go to the slower baits again, like the shaky heads, drop shots, Ned rigs, finesse jigs. But if you do have a little bit of wind combined on shade, that's when you need to power fish and fish those moving baits, even if the water's a little bit clearer. Um, so it's it's all situational, but. Guys, the bass will move with the shade line. It's like those fish, it doesn't take it doesn't take them a split second to swim from the bank out 10 or 20 foot, and they will follow that shade line. And a lot of times they will be right on the edge of that shade line where the shade meets the sun. So don't pass them up, man. You can run a pattern and a shade line just cover itself. You don't have to have any bank cover. You don't have, it can be a bare gravel mud bank. The shade is the cover that the fish are using. So. A lot of times the bait fish and the perch will be there too, it keeps the bass there, but don't pass them up, especially this time of year. They're great ways to catch fish all day long. So hope it helps you catch a few. We'll talk to you guys later. See you.